Welcome to Proof Points, a podcast by Latham High Tech Seeds. Family owned and farm proven for more than 75 years, Latham Seeds is growing strong. Now, here's product manager and host of Proof Points, Steve Sick. We're here with Aaron Steenhoop this morning, RSM in South Central Iowa for Latham High Tech Seeds. How are you this morning, Aaron? Good, doing well, Steve. Good. A lot of things have changed since we visited last. Uh, one of the biggest things that's on the top of everybody's mind right now is drought. How is that coming in your area? You know, I, the biggest thing I'm going to say around the drought is is uh, inconsistency. Um, there's, a, there's a few areas that have gotten some timely rains, we'll say. Nobody's, nobody's wet or flooding by any means, but uh, some of the areas that have been able to catch some consistent rains are looking really, really good, mm-hmm. and they're going to have a bumper crop if we can, you know, continue to catch a little bit more moisture through uh, grain fill and, and pod fill, you know, in the soybeans. And you know, there's there's places that uh, definitely look uh, reminiscent of 2012. We'll say. Right, right. How far are you away from pod and grain fill? Uh, we're, we're majority of my territory is is getting fairly close. I would say there's uh, there's some corn out in eastern Nebraska that's actually just starting to tassel already. Mm. The early stuff planted um, throughout central Iowa. Um, a lot of that corn was planted in the late April to to uh, mid May time frame, and that stuff looking through a lot of it is anywhere from three to five collars away. So somewhere in the next week to ten days, there's going to be a lot of corn starting to tassel. Right, right. Unfortunately, you know the uh, 14 day outlook for weather isn't isn't the best for us either, unfortunately. So one thing that that's kind of leading into is, you know, I know there's some reports of starting to see tar spot showing up. Have you seen any tar spot or what are your feelings on tar spot? Haven't been able to find it in the field yet. Um, I'm aware it's been found in what, seven counties now in the state of Iowa confirmed. Um, It's definitely something to keep an eye on, you know, the the areas that have caught consistent moisture um, and some of the fringe areas around those areas, mm. they've had consistent dews overnight. And that's been part of our saving grace um, as we've gone through some of the heat as we've had cooler nights right. to allow that corn to to rest a little bit, too. And so we've we've actually had, even though we're in the middle of the drought, we've actually had, you know, some of the environment that we need in order mm-hmm. for our spot to start forming. So it's something we're definitely going to need to keep an eye on. Uh, as we move forward and remember that uh, if we're starting to see lesions, it's already too late. Right. You know, that plant's already been infected. Um, and so we need to be a little bit more proactive on it this year, I think, right. than we have been the last couple of years. Yeah, it's really important that for those of you listening, that if you do find lesions on the lower leaves, uh, that is the most important time to start spraying. Uh, if it affects, you know, if it starts showing up in leaves above the ear, once we get into that time of year, that's uh, not as important to spray but you know this early on detecting tar spot get out and scout is absolutely one of the most important things you can do i agree yep any uh, any specific hybrids uh, that latham offers that you know you're excited about that would be in your area for tar spot um there's a couple Uh, on the early side there's going to be 104 day that looks um to be extremely good on the tar spot side of things that's that's definitely going to have a northern play um mm-hmm. you know towards the very northern end of my territory um we had uh 61 la 6155 um last year at 111 day that seems to handle uh the tar spot very well for some of the things in our current lineup as well and, and taking a look at some of our exps and new launches this year um you know they look to be an upgrade over mm-hmm. current lineup and so kind of excited to see the new products as we go throughout um you know the rest of the season here and, and how they perform and right right now one of the other new things that we've done this year at latham is we've introduced what's called training and excellence plots we call them tie plots for short um i know you've had the ability to use one and utilize one in the Ames area can you just kind of tell us what you did when you went there, you know, your participation you had and kind of what you're looking at when you get to those tie plots. Yeah, absolutely. So we actually were, we were able to go to Ames on Monday. Um, and then actually we had another group of dealers. We were in Keystone, uh, (laughs) Iowa on Tuesday as well. So we had uh, really good participation out of the group. We evaluated, I believe there was 17 different hybrids that were, uh, maturity specific to our area that we evaluated. We dug roots, we cut up plants. We're looking at phenotypes planting conditions um and all sorts of things as well as talking about you know 
disease, um, tar spot, you know, things mm-hmm. potentially coming down the pipeline, um, you know, for later on this year and helping to educate the dealers on what to look for in the fields, you know, help their customers scout and make sure they're staying ahead of these types of things. Uh, that way they can, you know, provide better customer service right. and better return on investment. Yeah. What was the feeling from your customers at that event? It was good. They were excited. Um, we had, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of good ideas bouncing off and off off of each other. Uh, something good. I think that was a little bit unique is we crossed some territory lines. And so mm. we had, you know, some groups together that maybe normally wouldn't get mm-hmm. together. Right. And so some of the more Western guys from Western Iowa and Nebraska were talking to guys that were, you know, closer over to Illinois and, and talking about some different things they were seeing. You know, the Eastern guys had te- seen Tar Spot a little more than the Western guys. Mm-hmm. And, and so the Western guys are a little bit more prone and used to drought and right you know so they were talking about what works in those type of years mm-hmm. and, and that's something normally they wouldn't get right right yeah that is a little bit unique is this the first year you've had that ability to experience those plots like that this is the first year we've really had uh you know at, in a large group setting right. i'll say with okay. the dealers um we had kind of we started this a little bit last year on some smaller scales um, you know, a little bit closer to home, but we really didn't have the the large group and crossing territory lines and and a little bit bigger geographies coming together like right, we did this right. year. So, are those plots available also in the soybean side as well as corn? They are. Yep, we have them on the corn and soybean side both. So we're actually planning here probably somewhere around the uh, middle to latter part of July. Here we're gonna go look at the soybeans as we get a little bit closer to being able to see a few more of the differences uh, in soybeans out in the field. Right. Being in the R&D side for my entire career, it's, you know, it's always interesting to get different people's opinions on what you look at at different times of the year. A lot of people think there's there's nothing to see right now. Do you differ in that opinion? Is there plenty to see right now to go out and look at those plots? Oh, absolutely. There's always something you can see. There's always something you can learn, you know, learn on the the bigger differences. I'll say above ground, you know, starting mm-hmm. to come later on in the season. There's always things you can find currently above right. ground as well. but early season i like to dig plants look at what's going on below ground you mm-hmm. know it tells me a bigger story um you know we were able to find some rootworm feeding uh in ames oh, wow. already right. we found some re- westerns and northerns we found some rootworm feeding we were able to find some uh some planter mistakes from this spring wow. you know um there was a little bit tacky conditions one part of the plot mm-hmm. got planted we found some compacted roots some hatchet roots and that was leading to a few deficiencies like some potash deficiencies and so on with the drier weather um, in a few pockets. And so there's always something you can find. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's it's very important to go out and do that this time of year. You know, I may not think there's much to see, but like Aaron said, there's a lot to see, look at and different things to view out in the field this time of the year. Uh, it's also nice. It, you know, the corn's not tall enough, really, if you can get a good breeze blow and it's nice and comfortable out there and see things that maybe you can correct for next year. Absolutely. Well, and, and even maybe help to correct this year, you know, mm-hmm. if, you, if you're out there looking at it at a decent time, you know, if you're if you're catching some of those red issues, if you're, you know, catching some deficiencies early on in the season, that that gives you some time to make some in-season applications right. versus, you know, if it's tassel time and you're noticing a potash deficiency in your corn, it's, it's well, it's, it's way yeah, too, late too late at that point in time. Yep. No, no, I agree. Yep, that's a good point. Anything else going on in your territory on the east or west side? And there's always some differences, you know, from east to west, different soils, um, you know, different different plant architectures and, and root development, stuff like that. But, you know, as far as disease wise and those types of things, we're not seeing a lot of different yet mm-hmm. um, major differences. And it's it's dry across the board. So um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this year develops yeah. for us. Yeah, it will. So one of the other things that we've offered this year that's a little bit different is we've gone through and we've offered the RSM to sneak peek at what our product guide looks like this year. There's been quite a few changes, some changes at some columns, some changes at some ratings. Uh, you've had a chance to look at that, Aaron. How do you think that looks? It's I think it's going to be really good. It's it's condensed, but it still gives you a lot of really pertinent information, um, more organized, and I think it's going to help with, you know, Some of the silage conversations, some of the dual purpose conversations, mm-hmm. um, you know, different trait products, um, disease ratings and so on. They're they're easier to find and they're more. Um, more kind of a user friendly book. Absolutely. Okay. More user friendly book, a little bit more condensed. It's not quite as big of a book this year. Right. either. And so I think it's I think it's going to have a lot 
a lot more uh, user friendliness out in the countryside. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's the changes have been very good. Uh, we worked hard at making those changes and listening to what the customers and the RSMs have to say on, you know, everybody's product guide is very similar. So no, I think it's it's done great. I think Kurt, our graphic designer, has done an excellent job too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think he's he's done a good job of of uh, you know making sure that all the the variety and hybrid information you need is in there but also you know some of the the trade information some of the latham information you know mm -hmm. the family history the company history and so on it's it's kind of a unique book yeah you know um as far as telling the story and the, and the whole picture of why and who is latham mm -hmm. yeah i think one of the one of the unique things is we put a trait characterization chart and trait comparison chart so it lists all the traits out there in the industry uh, what everybody is selling, and then what each hybrid uh, contains, you know, VT Double Pros, Smart Stacks, Power Core, and List, uh, what each one compares. So, you know, that's some really useful information as to how like a lot of traits are, but yet there's subtle differences and a lot of the differences that are out there too. And the same thing is offered on soybeans as well. Just to make sure um, we've had some issues, obviously, we're some people have sprayed Extendamax, Extendflex over the top of V3 hybrids, and that's just not a great combination. As well as vice versa. Yeah. It's not good when you're spraying in less no. on the over top of Extender or Extendflex no. soybeans either. So. No, while we're on that conversation topic, uh, what's your area as far as percentage wise on E3s versus Extendflex? Uh, I would say currently we're floating probably somewhere in that. 90% uh, enlist E3 as a whole, 10% uh, extend, extend flex. There is some areas that are considering going back to um, the extend, extend flex platform. There's some different weeds that um, are a little better controlled with the Dicamba mm -hmm. Liberty program, um, as well as just some differences in genetic bases um, and some of those things. And so they're both good platforms. Um, they're both great weed control mm -hmm. programs as well. You know, you just have to figure out what works for you, arm your operation, um, you know, and then proceed with the options in front of you. Right. You know, one of the things you mentioned was about, you know, mixing herbicides in it. Are you seeing much resistance to either dicamba or Enlist in your area? You know, I would say we're not seeing a lot of widespread stuff, but there's pockets. Um, there's pieces here and there, you know. Mm -hmm. For instance, the the southern end of my territory um, has probably a longer no-till history oh. uh, and a wider use of uh, 2,4-D. And so there's some of those guys that the 2,4-D... Um, is not doing them any good for their mare's tail. Their their mare's tail right. has become, you know, 2,4-D resistance. And so uh, the dicamba is a play for the burn down there with a Liberty mm -hmm. Post. Right. Um, and vice versa. I've got, uh, you know, some guys that ran uh, the old Guardsman Maxes and Status and a lot of heavy dicamba usage in their corn. Um, and so now they've got some, some pig weed and some of those types of weeds that are resistant to uh, the dicamba side of things. Mm -hmm. And so the the 24d is still working uh for them as well so yeah unfortunately i think in some cases we're kind of building super weeds uh you know we, we keep bringing new combinations in uh what's already out there instead of bringing in new modes of action mm -hmm. i know there's some coming toward the end of the decade first of the 2030s um but that's obviously a, a ways away uh, the other thing i'm not a fan of is using all of our herbicides in both corn and soybeans I think it's great to rotate. If you've got corn, you can use a certain set of herbicides. you got soybeans, you can use another set. I think it's very important to rotate your herbicide programs. Absolutely. You know, and there's, as we proceed, you know, down the road with multi-stack soybeans, there's, mm -hmm. there's getting to be more and more of those um, herbicides that are crossing over from one crop to the other. Right. And I, so I think as we move forward, you know, I think there's going to be some usefulness and carryover and, you know, drift and there's, mm -hmm. there's some applications for those types of things. But what you said is, is that on, I think it's important to remember to switch up your, your modes of action, you know, between your crops, that way you don't create resistant weeds faster. And I think something else to, to remember too, is stack your modes of action, you know, don't rely Good solely point. on one mode of action, right? right? Don't rely solely on your 2,4-D. You know, don't rely solely on your Liberty or your group 27s and herbicides mm -hmm. in, in the, the corn, um, excuse me. And, uh, you know, stack your modes, stack your, your chances of, of having right. a successful kill. Right. And one thing that what Aaron just described is leaning into is you really have to keep good track and good record keeping 
as to where you plant because uh, not everything is going to, to contain you know the crop is not going to contain resistance to those certain herbicides so it's extremely important to keep track of where you plant those hybrids varieties and make sure we get the right herbicide family sprayed on those crops uh, just to, pre to prevent that resistance to just prevent continued use of the same herbicides absolutely you know and better records lead to you know um better planning down the road as right. well you can see what worked from year to year mm -hmm. you know you can look back at drier years and, and figure out what worked for you in a year like that as well so that record keeping you know has has more than one application right. when it comes yeah. to success yeah unfortunately we've had several years now to where this drought and dry situation is becoming more and more commonplace and so unfortunately we're building that trend it's a trend we really don't want to build where we're getting more and more knowledge on drought tolerance, on dry land situations, to where hopefully when we get back into a more normal year, which what is normal, uh, you know, we can, it really will offset the trends we got going for the drought. Yep, absolutely. And disease pressure is different, you know. Yeah, good point. We're, we're finding some some differences in hybrids, you know, with the drier diseases than, than what we had, you know, the previous few yeah, years with point. wetter climates as well. Right, so. right, right. No, that's a good point. Nothing's the same. Uh, that's the most interesting part about agriculture and farming is it's different from year to year and nothing is ever the same and we're, we're just not building up that what's considered a normal so absolutely and with that i hope you've enjoyed this episode of proof points thanks for tuning in and have a great week mm -hmm.